Just in and so good. Thousands of summer deals at your Nordstrom Rack Store. Save big on this season's best new arrivals from free people. Adidas, Kurt Geiger London, Steve Madden, and more. Starting at just $30. Seriously. So rack your look for summer. Score great brands and great prices at Nordstrom Rack today. Hurry in and get first dibs on the sun-ready styles you want from just $30 at your Nordstrom Rack Store. What will you find? Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, for probably too long, Pittsburgh celebrated two holidays on the 4th of July. Independence Day, obviously, but also the birthday of 19th century composer Stephen Foster. The Lawrenceville native had some bops at the time. Beautiful Dreamer, Oh Susanna, Camp Town Races, and more. Foster himself was not a Confederate leader, but there was an extremely racist statue of him that sat in Oakland for almost 120 years. It came down by unanimous decision in 2018. And this time last year, we wondered where it's been since. We're throwing it back to CityCast's Morgan Moody and museum curator Hamza Walker of LAX Arts. It's Monday, July 3rd. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. Hamza, thank you for joining us on CityCast Pittsburgh. Yeah, thank you for having me. So you're the director at LEX Art. You're also curating uh, this exhibit of decommissioned Confederate statues. So how did you get the idea for this exhibition? Yeah, well, I'm actually one of three curators on the project, uh, but I was the instigator, instigator curator. (laughs) So uh, the exhibition is titled Monuments. The idea came about in late 2017, early 2018, after a kind of the first wave, I'm going to call it, of decommissioning of monuments um, was kind of heating up, I guess, right? So so after, after Dylan Roof. Exactly, after, exactly, yeah. right? So Dylan Roof after the Mother Manual Massacre and Bree Newsom climbing up the flagpole 10 days later, taking down the Confederate flag. That was kind of the first declaration that these things had to come down. Did you, did you grow up in a place where these statues were, were prevalent? Yes, yes, yes. Formative years in Baltimore. Oh. And so, you know, the couple of times that I cut high school, we would go to Robert E. Lee Park. But it just became a kind of furniture in the urban landscape, in a sense, you know, from the perspective of a, of a teenager. Right. Yeah, I I think that's kind of how people felt about the Stephen Foster statue here in Pittsburgh. Um, To be honest with you, I spent a lot of my life growing up in Oakland. I went to school there for most of my life, and I don't think I ever paid attention to this at all. (laughs) Stephen Foster wasn't a Confederate leader, though. He was a composer, uh, a one that stole songs and stole a lot of his melodies from Black people. So essentially, you know, a a racist composer nonetheless. Um, why did you decide to add him to the exhibition? And how did he, how did this statue end up on your radar? You know, so we've taken to calling the exhibition <laughs> Confederates and Friends <laughs> when it comes to the monument portion, yeah. right? So there's you know, adjacent monuments that are Confederate adjacent, let's yeah. call Yeah, R- racism so, adjacent. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. I mean, it, the, the Stephen Foster Monument which was taken down uh, and in my sense is primarily because of the depiction of Uncle Ned. Right. It's Foster, but then there's this barefoot black man sitting at his feet playing the banjo. Right. Uh, Which is the same as the same case as Boston. Right. So the emancipation group in Boston also came down. Now that's a very famous statue by Thomas Ball. It's a copy of the Emancipation Monument that's in Washington, D.C., the very famous one with Lincoln with his arm extended and you've got the crouching, kneeling slave. Uh, But because of the crouching, the kneeling figure, that was considered a demeaning representation. Mm -hmm. So like the Foster Monument, it too was taken down. So that long backdrop, uh, just to give you a sense that uh, the Stephen Foster Monument, one, won't be alone (laughs) in the exhibition. And in terms of how it 
uh, came up on the radar, it wasn't so much that monument in and of itself as much as it was in the slipstream of monuments coming down. And what about his legacy, I guess? Because I I think that contributes a lot to why this statue was controversial in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, he launched his career writing songs for minstrel shows, the ones with blackface. In some sense, Stephen Foster could be seen as a forerunner of how much of the entertainment industry and popular culture would be based around a relationship to African-Americans, both slaves and then recently freed slaves, right? If we think about the purchase that minstrelsy acts, for example, had on American popular culture, which is considerable, right? From uh, what, 1828, all the way up to the 1930s, 40s. So to think of Stephen Foster on the one hand as problematic in and of himself, but then he also represents a much larger dynamic that would be in effect for a century. That statue here was removed in April 2018 by a unanimous decision from the Pittsburgh Art Commission. Um, what was your pitch to get the Foster statue to L.A.? Like, did you have to do a lot of convincing? Because I feel like it can't be easy to. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a question of chain of command and protocol. Right. So in a lot of instances, the monuments were taken down, particularly after the Unite the Right rally. Right. By city hall and the and a, and a mayor's office that would say, okay, I'm declaring these things that this is a public safety issue, right? Mm-hmm. Public safety on two counts. One, if hundreds of white supremacists are going to come and rally around these things and create protests that turn violent, that's a problem. And two, if the counter protesters decide to yank these things down, that too is a problem. So we should get out in front of this and just take them down. Now, Although the mayor, the mayors of towns would have the authority to take them down, that doesn't mean they're the stewards of the objects. So when we put in our request, you know, we would write to the Department of Cultural Affairs. Is it the Historic Preservation or Trust or is it City Hall? And so in the case of Pittsburgh, uh, it, I'm going to call them the Department of Cultural Affairs. I think it has a different acronym. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's Arts, Arts Commission. Pittsburgh Arts Commission. Yeah. So it was great interfacing directly with them as the stewards of the object. The request wouldn't be foreign, right? So, you know, the question of why would an institution, let alone an institution out on the West Coast, want to borrow this thing? When you deal with an arts commission, the request for the loan of a work of art is not outside their wheelhouse, right? Yeah, they're like, we get it. Right, we get it. You know, you're making an exhibition, you're going to pay all costs, the thing is insured wall to wall. We're going to get it back. As a, so, so that was relatively smooth so that we could actually get to questions of, to talk about the exhibition itself. Just in and so good. Thousands of summer deals at your Nordstrom Rack Store. Save big on this season's best new arrivals from free people. Adidas. Kurt Geiger London, Steve Madden, and more, starting at just $30. Seriously. So rack your look for summer. Score great brands and great prices at Nordstrom Rack today. Hurry in and get first dibs on the sun-ready styles you want from just $30. At your Nordstrom Rack store, what will you find? The all-new Toyota Prius looks nothing like you've ever seen before. It's, you just got to see it. Yeah, okay, this is going on the radio, so um, you're going to need to describe the all-new Prius to people. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vroom, swoosh, uh, use your words, please. Oh, oh, got it. Here we go, wowzers! Ugh, I give up. The all-new Prius, it's indescribable now. Toyota, let's go places. Vehicle inventory may be limited. Check with your Toyota dealer. Have there ever been other plans for the statues to do anything else with them? Like, is this an easy ask, basically, to get these? No, it's not an easy ask at all. Uh, I I made a joke to the uh, Historic Preservation Committee of Charleston, and it was a public meeting. And I think I may have opened my remarks with a joke to them that it would be easier for me to ask to borrow 
an old master work <laughs> from the Uffizi in Florence, Italy, a Botticelli, than it is for me to ask for the loan of a Confederate statue, a decommissioned Confederate statue from a municipal agency, right? Yeah. So even though the request for an old master work would be denied, it still falls within, you know, museum to museum protocol. That's what I mean. Like, what were there any other plans? Like, did even the cities have any other plans to do anything with these statues no. after they were taken down or decommissioned? No, no. That's everybody's figuring it out right now. And now it's not going to be a one size fits all approach, right? So in Charlottesville, for example, the Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, those were toxic. So the city council had a mandate from the public to get them out of there, right? So they could actually call for the transformation of those monuments. So in one case, they're hoping to melt it down, take the bronze, give it to an artist, make a statue to be unveiled 2027, which is the 10-year anniversary of the Ninth Right. You know, the folks in Richmond, no, they don't have the political will or appetite for melting them down, even under the auspices or the rubric of transformation. No, instead, recontextualization, right? And now there are different ways to recontextualize it. In some cases, they just want to put up another plaque. In some cases, give it to the State History Museum, right? And in other cases, a change in stewardship can be the most effective and radical change of context. So in the case of Richmond, the uh, Black History Museum of Virginia now owns, is the steward of the monuments that came down from Monument Avenue. Right? I do believe that whatever their fate, it should be decided locally. What Pittsburgh wants to see might be different than what Charlottesville wants to see. Yeah, and I know this exhibition is still a little ways away. You're commissioning new work for it, too. What are those pieces going to be like? It'll be a whole a whole range of responses. Yeah. Some instances, we've asked artists to take on particular monuments, right, to have a direct dialogue with, with the monument. In other instances, we've approached artists and pretty much left it open to them in terms of how they want to engage. Because there's so many facets, so many aspects, the show touches on a lot when it comes to both historical content, the legacies of slavery, but then on up into the present, yeah. right? So we can't divorce making the monuments accountable to now, to this moment, to this present, right? So can we see a relationship between the civil rights movement, the right to vote, and now recent attempts to disenfranchise African-Americans, right? Can we see a relationship between just how American history is taught or which narratives get emphasized or de-emphasized and the current attacks on critical race theory? Right? Can we dissociate the Civil War, the lost cause from Trump's campaign, right? And what he's become in January 6th and the insurrection. In terms of what the, the contemporary art is called upon to do, it's to make the links between then and now. So this is happening out in L.A. Is there a way for Pittsburgh listeners to experience the exhibit at all? Uh, we'll see. We're still in discussions about the exhibition <laughs> traveling. So, you know, you'll have to yeah. perhaps leave Pittsburgh. But, you know, in one instance, you won't have to go too, too far. Well, in two oh, Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, Fingers uh, crossed. We'll see. But I mean, I really want to thank Pittsburgh from the bottom of my heart. You know, we can't do the exhibition without the lenders, obviously, right? That's what makes it. So having Pittsburgh, Charlottesville, Boston, Baltimore, Lynchburg, Virginia, Fredericksburg, Virginia, like to have those, that really gives it a sense that it is a national discussion. And so to have Pittsburgh cast its lot with us, join the fight, get in, you know, is great. And it was early on that we got the green light from the Arts Commission. And so really want to thank you guys. We're, we're happy to be in this fight with you. So Hamza, thank you so much for joining us yeah. on CityCast Pittsburgh. Sure. Thank you for having me. LAX Arts has pushed back its big monuments opening to fall 2025, but don't worry, as far as we know, Foster is still on the guest list.
if after listening to all that, you still want to celebrate, here's some news you can use today. The city's Independence Day party starts at Point State Park tomorrow at 1 p.m. with a flag-raising ceremony at the Fort Pitt Museum. They'll be firing the cannon and playing historical tunes through 4 p.m. when the modern acts will take over. There'll be three stages all over that lawn, across the river on the North Shore, and on Liberty Avenue. There'll also be a C-17 flyover, a hot air balloon, a bunch of food trucks, and some kid stuff like face painting, caricatures, and more. The fireworks display begins after dark. That'll be right at 9.35 p.m. They are usually very prompt. This year's display is scheduled to last 25 minutes. And pro tip, please do not feel like you need to go downtown for this. My favorite spots to watch are Mount Washington, the West End Overlook, and if you can find one, the belly of the north side on one of those woebegone dead-end hills. You really can't beat it. You can also reserve official space at the Science Center, or you can take it all in on a Gateway Clipper River Cruise. And if the city is not your thing on a school night, you can also celebrate at Kennywood. They're doing their annual weenie dog races and the fireworks tonight and tomorrow. Finley Township is doing their 200th anniversary celebration tonight, and there's going to be fireworks displays all over the county tomorrow. Check out Mount Lebanon, Crafton, Monroeville, Brentwood, Scott Township, South Fayette, Moon, Robinson, and Shaler. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. Reminder, we will be off tomorrow for the holiday. If you see us out, no, you didn't. We'll be back Wednesday morning with more news from around the city. Stay safe, yins. Did you expect to become a minor expert on the Civil War? Because you really got your stuff down now. I'm nowhere near. I mean, I I went from being like, a C minus student of American history to a C plus student of American history, which is good overall, right? Like, because most Americans get a D in American history when it comes down to it. <laughs>